Ho, 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 and happy holidays from us at the Old Warlock. It's the Old Warlock Holiday Special, back again for year two. We know you guys loved it last year, so we wanted to do it again. You know, actually, this is year three. Yes, but we didn't. Yeah. Because we never published one that we did a couple years ago. No. Because we couldn't figure out how to do it. Because, we, yeah, we just we completely forgot to do it. So who knows? Maybe one of these days we'll just throw it up so you guys can take a look at it and see what was going on two It'll years ago. It'll be a ago. historic memory. Yes, but once again, it's been a wonderful year for the old world. It has been. Here, uh, full of growth, learning, fun, development. Good lots stuff. Of, lots of exciting things, and it's all thanks to you guys yes. at home. And we yes. appreciate each and every one of you, everything that you help us do and allow us to do, and we appreciate all of your support and all of the forms in which it comes. Yes, what he said. So, in this video, what we've got are a few more Dungeons & Dragons themed gifts that you can give that special little gamer in your life. Some pretty cool things. Some pretty cool things, and if not that, some things that you can get from your set for yourself if your holiday gifts are not quite everything that you hoped that they would be. And, and a little bit of D&D &D Christmas history. Absolutely we do. Thrown so, in as a bonus. So we hope that you enjoy this special holiday episode of The Old Warlock. Sit back, buckle your seatbelts, because it's going to be a wild ride. Okay. <laughs> So first on our list, we've got this bad boy right here. Check this out. It is a D20 die. Now those of you who have been following us for a long time here, don't look at that. It's not actually there. Um, but it glows. It glows in multiple colors. In multiple colors. It transitions through various different colors. It's a, it's a gift that I got a while back and it's just a nice little thematic accent piece for anybody who likes Dungeons and Dragons or anything that's dice related, any kind of role playing game. And if you put this bad boy in your living room, as soon as someone enters your house, they're going to know that you're one of those people. That you're one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Or you're one of us. One of us. One of us. Yes. But no, this is a, it's a great little it thing. Is it's fun. it's just a... kind of a neat little, you know, it's something, it's a, it's a decoration. It's something not necessarily yeah. for playing the game. Although, you know, you can still get. If you wanted to hack the cord off, you could use this as a 20 sided die. You I could, don't know. Yeah. It's up to you. Guys. Teach their own, you yeah. know, make these decisions for yourself. But uh, it is very, very cool. This is not very expensive either. It's only about $20. 20, 20 uh, you can find it. Dungeons and Dragons official websites actually, I think, sell it still. That's who manufactured it initially, but you can also find it at. You I know, think GameStop has GameStop it. GameStop and a lot of game stores. Just search it online. Like that, yeah. Search Dungeons and Dragons die lamp. Yeah, and, they're pretty easy to come across. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 high enough quality. I've had it for about a year now, and I've used it consistently, and it hasn't had any issues or broken mm -hmm. or anything like that. So. And you can have it going. As I remember, you can have it going multiple colors, or you can just have it like or, yeah. on as white, or yeah, you can just pink stop or it, whatever, and it will just stay whatever there color you, you want it to be. Blue. So, for a little bit of background lighting during your campaign, this is the perfect thing to get. Yes. So, we absolutely recommend it. That's yes. gift one. The second gift on our list is this bad boy right here. This is just actually a little dice container. Uh, it's made of wood. You open it up, it it's magnetically very strong closed magnets. up, very strong and you can just keep your dice right inside there for whenever you may need to, wherever you may need to bring them, keep them stored. They are nice and snug in this little container. This one is Cthulhu themed because as some of you know, as I've mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of the Cthulhu mythos and all of the legends and stories that surround that. So this is very fitting for me. Again, a gift that I received a few years back. You can still find these online. Uh, they're only around $30, but again, very high quality, very nice little. Very gift. high quality. And the thing that the thing that I like about these is everybody has their that one set of dice mm -hmm. that they break out in moments of crisis. And to me, that's what this, that's one of the functions that this serves. Yeah. Um, it's got your seven different, you know, primary dice. But to me, it's that, I don't know, there's something very solid about this. Yeah. And it's not nearly as expensive as some of those companies who make wooden products that I can't afford. No, that, yeah. And it's, it's really the same kind of thing. It's, it's the exact same thing. This one's made out of wood. And this was, that's available on Amazon. On Amazon from... 
I think the company was called Your Wizards, but I'll double check that and we'll put it down below so that we can make sure you guys can get the, the link to it. But it's still being sold. And high quality. Uh, yeah. It really is good. And the, the magnets on those are not wimpy magnets. I mean, they're like almost they rare really, earth magnet type things. They, they hold it really together. Strong, so. yeah. Another cool product. Yeah, definitely recommend that. Item number three. Now this to me is, I think this is one of the coolest things to have been produced for just sitting out you know, on your table and, again, proving to the world at large that you are a D&D geek. It's a gelatinous cube sculpture. That it is. Um, this, to me, is... I, I, I really was surprised at how pleased I was when we got this thing in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, it's not cheaply made. No. It is extremely heavy. Yeah. But if you look inside, there is We'll a, throw some close-ups here for yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. There's a treasure chest on the inside of the gelatinous cube because it has been obviously going down dungeon hallways, mm -hmm. you know, sucking up all the stuff. There's a shield. I believe that it's a, is it a goblin that's inside? I think it's supposed to be a goblin skeleton that is inside that is being, the clothes are, have been dissolved. There's all these skulls on the side. I mean, it's just, it's got a, it's just cool. And in the back, there is a beholder that is halfway dissolved as well. That's I going did into not it. notice. Where's that? Right there. Uh, well, of you course there is. In. Of course, but I didn't realize that that was a beholder. I thought that it was some other creature. That no, was yeah. so cool. A beholder and a little little guy who's being dissolved. But no, this is it's this is something that's a little bit more. You can obviously tell it's fantasy related, but unless you, someone does play D and D or has been exposed to some of this mythology, some of these creatures, people aren't really going to know what this. Somebody is. might think it's an ice cube. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> a but, big ice cube that sits on your shelf. But no, it, again, it's very very high quality. This also isn't that expensive. Um, only 30? Thirty-three dollars, like I think, that? was what I saw. Yeah. But they're selling these again all over the place. I yeah. think this is an official D&D licensed product, right. um, but they're sold at GameStop. I've seen them at game stores, again, all over the place. These are pretty easy to come by. But if you're looking for that thing that someone, for someone to put in their game room, to put on their shelf, to put on their table when they're playing as just some sort of a, you know, imagination spark, I think that you can't really go wrong with this gelatinous cube. And again, yeah. it is very high quality. A lot of the time these things are not this one, though, I have no complaints about it whatsoever. It's just exceptionally well made and yeah, well designed. It's, it's got some heft to it, uh, so we definitely recommend that as yeah, well. Another cool thing. Heck yeah. Our final gift recommendation, if you look at my co-host here, you're going to see that he has an old Warlock hoodie on. Now, not to toot our own horn, but, but we, we do are. have merchandise that we sell for the channel. Uh, it's got our logo on it, some other designs that we've created or that Zachary has created over the years. We've put on all kinds of different products. In fact, this one, if I can turn around, also has on the back, has a redesign of the skeleton coming out of the water from the DM. No, from the player. No. From it's either from the DM's, DM's guide, guide or the, the player's, player's handbook. handbook one of, of the two. But. but I love that picture, Zachary, the original, done. I think it was done by Dave Tramp here. I'm not sure. But I love that image. And so Zachary made this image here of a skeleton coming out of the water. So if you would like to give that special gamer in your life an old warlock themed officially item, licensed officially product. licensed for, there you go nice yeah. with officially drawn by old warlock staff artwork yes you can't go wrong with one of the products on our spread shirt site you surely can't and all the links to those are on the web page that you are looking at right now if you go back to the home page of the channel and you go to shop all of our stuff is going to be right there for you to click on you can order it through youtube itself without having to leave the site you've got hoodies shirts t-shirts baseball shirts stickers stickers teddy cups, bears te cups, teddy bears all kinds of good things you can get with all these different designs on a lot those. of cool stuff and anything you guys buy we don't really keep the money and go buy things. All yeah, we're not goes, like going out to dinner with it. No, all the money goes right back into the channel to continue funding what we do here at the Old Warlock, yes. the content we make. Yes. So if you're interested in doing that, go ahead and pick one of those up. We would really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, hopefully you like them. Finally. Finally. We have one more thing to talk about. We do have one more thing. Which is about. not merchandise related. No. I just happen to be going through, as you know, I've been going through back issues of the Dragon Magazine, and I came across a Christmas related article. Let's dive into it. Let's. In issue number 44. 44. And let me just give you this in case you want to find it for yourselves. 
Issue number 44 that came out in December of 1980. 42 years ago. I had only been playing the game for about a year and a half when this came out. I wouldn't be alive for another 20 years. For a long time. But the cool thing in this, let me scroll down here, get page 94. Uh, 41? Just a minute. Almost there. So what are your guys' holiday traditions? Be sure to let us know down below how you celebrate this wonderful season. If either D and D or not, yeah. So or role playing game or not or games. I mean, I'm sure you probably probably you like to play dominoes. I bet Let there are games know. being played at your house over Christmas, even we'd, if it's not D and D. We would like to know what they are. We would, so we can maybe try them ourselves. Exactly. I found it though. All right. All right. This is an article by Douglas Loss from what did I say? 1980. Yep. December of 1980 in the Dragon Magazine called Nothing But The Ho 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 Truth. And this is about Santa Claus and what he would be as an AD&D character, an Advanced Dungeons and Dragons character. Which I love. I'm just gonna read most of this to you. It's not very long, uh, but I think it's kind of a fun little thing. Santa Claus, outside of legends, what do we really know about him? I feel kind of like I'm reading Night Before Christmas by Clement Lamar. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm just reading this, but it feels that way. Mm. Uh, we can extrapolate from the legends to come up with some very interesting and thought-provoking hypotheses. First, we have direct evidence of Claus's race, Santa Claus's race. In Clement Moore's well-known treatise on Santa, he is identified as a right jolly old elf. So, mm. that gives us our, the beginning of our picture. Santa Claus elf. is an elf. Yes. Uh, in view of the well-documented age from various sources of Klaus, I'm inclined to believe this is to be at least partly right. However, in view of his famed girth and jollity, or no, sorry, jollity, I'm inclined to believe he has a bit of halfling blood in him too, which does make mm, sense to it. me. Sure, sure. His affinity for brightly colored clothing would also suggest that he is part halfling. So mm, at the moment, mm -hmm. we've got a half-elf, half-halfling. Half individual. Mm. Uh, but what of his class? Mm. Well, he's obviously a religious man, as his principal appearances coincide with the winter solstice religious festival of one of the major planetary gods. It's true. His teachings tend to be secularized versions of the holy writings of that god. He's also known in some places as Saint Nicholas. Mm. While he's never been known to use the standard clerical spells, I think we have strong evidence of cleric as one of his classes. I could see it. Half-elf, halfling cleric. We have even stronger evidence for Santa being a magic user of extremely high level. Besides the incredible strength of his magic, we know he's high level because he's established a stronghold at the North Pole and attracted many elven followers. He's put a permanent night spell on eight reindeer. He's cast an extremely powerful and permanent until dispelled mirror image spell on himself, his mm -hmm. sleigh, and his reindeer. That would explain a lot. It would. He and his followers use an extraordinary number of permanent create object spells each year to produce the goods they distribute. I'm really digging this. This, really, really, <laughs> this is kind of cool. Really way in depth here. Um, to produce the goods they distribute, though they oh, through the use of a uh, through the use of wizard eye spells. He sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. And by casting no alignment, he knows if you've been bad or good. All of this, so, all of this indicates a very experienced magic user. And you better be good, be good for goodness. goodness. Anyway, okay, moving on. We're almost done. It's just, just bear with me for a second, Mark, because I just think this is fun. So... An elven halfling cleric magic user, but what's his alignment? Obviously, it's some form of good. Many scholars opt for the immediate thought of lawful good, but I lean toward neutral good. Consider this. The regular repetition of the kindly acts he does each year precludes any sort of chaotic. I'd have to agree with that. Hmm. But a close description of those acts must lead to the conclusion that some of them are not lawful. Hmm. For example... He lands on the roof of a house and enters it through the chimney, a clear case that, if not <laughs> a clear case of illegal entry. 
He leaves multitudes of gifts that, if not carefully considered, could ruin the economy of the planet. Mm, that's, that's dead on. Fair point. These are obviously the deeds of someone of neutral good alignment, mm -hmm. interested only in as much good as he can do, unconcerned about the lawfulness of it. Neutral good is the goodest good. It's the goodest goodest good. Yeah. Yes. Lawful good is not the goodest good. So let's recap. Let's. Half elf. Half halfling. Half halfling. Possibly mixed class cleric magic user. Mm -hmm. Neutral good. Neutral good. I okay. Like it. So. Um, as yet, however, we know nothing of his personal characteristics. Perhaps a little speculation can shed some light on them. His dexterity is obviously very high, else how could someone in his rotundity make it down all those narrow chimneys? Rotundity. I like that That's word. That's a good word. I'd say he has a 17 or 18 dexterity. Mm. His charisma may be beyond measure. His followers are nothing short of fanatical. <laughs> Indeed. Which of you, if told Santa Claus needed you, wouldn't instantly rally to his side? I think that's... You're, you're without a Santa Claus, if you've seen it. If Perfect you've, example. Exactly, exactly. To be as high level a magic user as he evidently is, his intelligence must be 18 and his wisdom must be very high too, since he never seems to anger or to lash out at anyone. This would require a very wise person. It would. His strength and constitution are less clear. We really know nothing about his strength. His constitution is probably high to be able to absorb all that magic that he's constantly exposing himself of to. Of course, of course. But we have no direct evidence of this. We don't. What about psionic powers? I don't think we can assume that he has any. Of course, many of the things attributed to magic could be psionic, but assuming psionics would complicate the picture needlessly. Let me, refer, let me say that again. But assuming psionics would complicate the picture needlessly. Mm. So no psionics no involved with, with Santa. And he doesn't need them. No. With that level of magic He's use, too powerful. Exactly. Yeah. It is truly unfortunate that such a famous and revered figure as Santa Claus should be known to us only through conjecture and speculation. It would be a boon to the world if we knew the facts about him, but that would only happen if someone were to... if someone were able to get him to take a little time on his yearly rounds to tell us about himself. Sadly, no one has ever successfully researched a Hold Santa spell. And it isn't likely to happen this Christmas either. Just a little bit of fun. A little from, bit of Christmas fun. From Douglas Loss. Thank you, Douglas. If you're out there, Douglas, we would love to hear from you. We would. Um, but, again, if you'd like to have a copy of this article for yourselves, you need to go to Dragon Magazine issue number 44, which came out in December of 1980. 1980. But we hope that that puts a little more Christmas cheer into your Christmasiness. Indeed. And hopefully these this short list of gifts here, which are we thought were reasonably priced but really, really cool. Yes. Hopefully that will also help you toward uh, a fun Yuletide time. Indeed. Anything else? No, not really. You're just kind of in a happy, cheery Christmas mood. Aren't it's you? the holidays. Yeah. How could I not be? Thank you guys all so much for all of your support. All yes. Year. We appreciate it. Just we really like we do. said last year, the channel has grown a decent amount. We're still not critical role up there. You know, but we'll get there yeah. someday. Well, probably not. But we're still having fun doing it. Yeah, so I'm not, that's the important part. Exactly. But anyway, I'm Jim. This is our Christmas special. I'm Alex. Keep your sword on free. See you next time. Celebrate happily. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.